this time of the quick speed shop, we're going to be working on the box on the Model A hot rod shop truck. I'm a professional, don't try this at home. Alright, now the box is back from the sandblaster and it's pr primed up here. i got to do a little bit of work on it to get where I want to be before I get to paint it. Now the box is pretty straight, but it's got some wonky action in it. The tailgate's pretty wonky, and there's a couple of dings and dents and stuff in the side of this. This truck was a hot, this box is on a truck that was a hot rod back in the 60s, and for some reason they put super short chains on the tailgate. So if I uh, hooked it up now, the tailgate only owns, opens up that far. So what I want to do is put some longer chains on it, but use the stock hooks here. So I went onto my, my wall of action where I save old junk. Look at this, I've got a collection of vintage tailgate chains that are all uh, vintage boxes I cut up and junked. But I saved the tailgate chains and they're all crusty and rusty. But there's probably ones that we can use to work on this truck. So let me dig through it and see what I got. This one, I don't really like the long chain links and get rid of that. This one on the broken hook. I think that came off the Studebaker box. Got one here, one here. He's got the little claspers on them that match, and then I think this is the other Studebaker one that goes over here. I'll probably cut use these chains because these these hooks are both shot, and the one's homemade out of a piece of uh, round rod. This one's alright, I'll save this, but I think I'll, uh, I'll cut these chains up. Alright, perfect. Now I got the chains that will work. And this is why you always save stuff. I say you don't trash it when you can stash it, because I've got Vintage chains for my vintage box and my vintage truck. Let's go ahead and we'll wing ding this one here just so we can get an eyeball at it. I'm going to transfer over the original hooks too because they're in really nice shape and they're I think original Model A, but I just want to get a look at the length of the chain. Yeah, when that hook is on there, that'd be about right. It's a little long to get the idea. I want to obviously have the tailgate be able to come all the way down. That way I can haul stuff with the hanging out the back of the truck. Let me get these uh, old chains off and then we'll uh, see what it looks like. Well, this I'll probably have to put in the vise to get it apart here. Let me go uh, do that real fast. All right, so this is gonna be about perfect. I took two links out of the chain and I just used those old expandable ones that were on the, the short chains I clink the one back together for the hook. I leave this one um, open because I want to take these off. I'm gonna soak these probably in like a rust converter or something just to get the get some of the rust off here and uh, then paint them black. So the way this latches is this big link that stays on the box comes around and then you put the hook in there and that that holds the tailgate closed. It can't come open. But what you got here is these chains will crash around and rub on the back of the box and they'll rub the paint, there'll be chain marks. They'll rub, rub a half moon in the back of the box. So what I'm gonna do is an old trick from the 50s is you take a, an old bicycle inner tube and you cut it to fit over this chain and then you put it over the train and you put a drain hole in the bottom because rainwater would get in here and it'd make your chains all rusty. So you take the inner tube, put it on, poke a hole in the bottom or drill a hole in the bottom, cut a hole in the bottom, whatever, so water can get out but the rubber will keep the chain from rattling on the box and wearing the paint off. So I gotta go find one of those when I get ready to put this together or put the rubber on. Step in, step in action. I got my box mounts made here. I use inch and a half by inch and a half uh, eighth wall angle iron. And I've got two in the back ready to get welded on the frame here. And I'm actually adding two up here to the middle by the axle for uh, a future mount for something I might want to do in the box. But I'm not going to tell you what that is right now because it's a secret. So I've got these uh, ready to weld on. Get the welder, welder fired up. 
go ahead and uh, burn them on here. And I'll set the box back down and I can mark and drill up the holes to the bottom. And uh, there'll be a whole bunch of holes. There'll be six holes, six bolts holding the box down. That'll be more, way more than plenty. Well, I got the uh, parts ground down and the primer is drying on the frame. I went ahead and I sanded the primer really lightly to the block and the box here. And all these spots are showing up are all the high spots that need to be hammered, hammered down. The dents are dense here. The whole thing is kind of waffly. But I'm just going to take the hammer and dolly and just hammer this a little bit. And just kind of smooth these out a little bit. The box isn't going to be super straight, but like I said before, I'm going to use this truck to haul junk and it's probably going to get scratched and banged up again so I'm just going to knock them out the best I can but I used the, the block to find the high spots so I know where to hammer. It's hammer time. So I can use my hammer and dolly here. Just kind of work it just a little bit. I got those knocked down a little bit. There's a whole bunch of big ones here in the wheel wells and that wheel on the other side is even worse. So I'm just going to work my way, just work my way around. I could put the DA sander on this matey grit and I could really grind into this and take some of the sh little bit of shape out of the metal and just work it back and smooth this out a little bit. But you'll see, you'll see it in the paint on the outside a little bit, but I'm not worried about it because this is a shop truck. It's meant to do work. <laughs> I've knocked the dents out of this pretty good. I'm just smoothing it up with the DA a little bit here. Um, it's still, there'll definitely be just a little trace evidence in the paint because it's not uh, smoothed out perfectly. It would take a lot of picking and hammering and and all that to pick out, pickle all these out and then a little bit of skim coat of filler. But working it this way, knocking them out the best way I could and then sanding it here and taking some of the high spots off. It'll be close enough for what, what this truck's going to be and I won't have to worry about it being perfect and that hauling stuff and banging it up. But it's going to look a lot better than it was because they were real pronounced dents before. The, the wheel wall on the other side was was pretty bad. I got that knocked out pretty good. And actually, I had a, some of the real hard hits that were pushed way out. I had to hammer them in with the pick, the round pointed pick, then sand the top off of the grinder a little bit to kind of smooth them out because they were really super stretched and like a real pin prick type of hit. So I cleaned those up real good. It looked a lot better. It was it was right full of them. So this is alright. I also straightened out the top of the rail a little bit here. Um, you can see all the spot welds where they spot welded the sheet metal over the top. You can see all those in here which you would have seen from the factory. But I got some of the bigger dents out of the top and I'm going to have a, a rail up here when I get this put together. It's going to protect it a little bit. But I'm just going to clean it up a little bit of hand sandpaper here and throw some more primer on it. Let it set up and Go from there. Okay, what I'm adding now is a stabilizer bar to help hold the battery box, which is here. I'm gonna have a little arm come off this down to keep the battery box from swaying like this with the weight of the battery in it, since it's only mounted up top here. But I'm also gonna build a basket down inside the frame um, in a later video, which is gonna hold the jack and some tools and all that underneath the bed floor of the pickup, since there's limited space in this truck. Um, when I had it on the road originally, I had a box down here and it was very handy to keep the tools that you don't need very often like jumper cables and a jack and a little fold up lug wrench and some other tools down in a box under the bed with some drain holes in it so it doesn't get full of water. But this is wasted space here on this truck so 
makes a very good spot to store things. And when storage is at a premium, we got to get creative. So I'm just going to burn on this one inch bar across here. And then uh, I'm also going to make a little tab to tie in the shock pivots. I got these kind of shear mounted off the side of the frame. So I'm going to gusset them over this bar and this will give them some more strength to help hold the shock mounts a little bit better. So you can see that here burn in, and now these pieces of thick wall tubing that I've got a shock stud welded into, like I said before, they're just sheared off the side of the frame, and this is going to add a gusset over here to this bar, and that will help stiffen this up quite a bit and take all the, uh, the shear force off the side of this frame, which in theory could potentially rip the tubing later on. So gussing it up here will take all that worry right out of this whole operation. Well, look at we got a surprise visitor. Chad's here. What's up, Chad? What's going on? So we're going to pick the box up and set it. You want some gloves? No, I'm good. I don't, you don't really need them because it's brand new, but we're going to set this box back up on here. And the, uh, let's get back. The hole, you see the hole there? You set it straight down. Bang. It kind of like nests on here. You stick that bolt down through there. Oh, yeah, new catchphrase. Ready? Don't trash it when you can stash it. That's a new quick speech shot. Oh, yeah. logo. I, I, I put it in videos now. So you can see the crossbar here fits down on the floor nice. And the battery will be down here in the box. And then the storage box will be here. And I'm going to hinge the floor somehow to make this, uh, make this work. I don't know if it's going to be half hinged or the whole thing or what. But that will be awesome for store and action. So I'm just going to square this, we're going to square this up on the frame and I'll take the marker and mark down here the bottom of the, the holes and then drill these other four holes to bolt this thing down all the way. I've got the creeper out. I wonder, I got a marker in my pocket. Trying to eyeball this. Oh, a scale. I don't know if you want to measure it. Well, I start measuring now. I wanted to put the half inch drill in, bit in the drill and use it to make a starter hole, but I don't know if I can get the drill as close to the frame. Why is it? Man, this. I wouldn't be able to do it over here because the rear end's in the way anyways. Oh, Alright. Alright, well I still got the box on here. Chad had to go. We had to do something else in the middle, but I'm back at it here. I'm going to use the big gun here and take some big wax at this. This thing is really caved, caved out this way, so I'm going to give her a couple big wax, see if I can move it. She's wild. Was sucked way out on the bottom, like half inch. It's knocked in a lot closer now. I got a ton of a uh, ton of walnuts and wallops in here. I'm mean, gonna have to do a ton of hammering and dallying on here to try to get them out the best I can. But the tailgate's gonna be wonky, just like the side of the box. But at least I can knock some of the bigger stuff out of here. So I'm gonna keep hammering on this. You probably don't need to see me hammer forever. All right, spend about half an hour hammering the dents out of the tailgate here. I got it pretty good up in here. I got a little bit of more damage down the center section where I really had a whale on it to get the highs and lows out of it. I straightened the edges of the gate all the way out with the dolly all the way around. 
then I got distracted. I like to get distracted on separate things, so I I had a hitch on this truck when I had it on the road originally. I had a small receiver hitch, and you would pull it out, and there's a uh, hinge on the license plate, and the license plate would cover the receiver, but you still saw it hanging down in the back of the truck, and I, I don't like the look of that. I want to leave this like old timey, like 60s look. So I've got this old draw tight bumper mount hitch that came off like a 70s car, and I think I can modify this to bolt onto the rear cross member, maybe add another plate to the back, and uh, I've got it. An antique looking uh, ball here I'm going to put on the back. But I wanted to do that, but I didn't have any place to put the license plate. And I was trying to figure out, like, under the light, but it sticks well way too far and on top of the frame here or whatever. I even thought about maybe in the center under the back window, but that's kind of hokey. So, what I figured out is I'm going to mount it back behind the cross number about three inches right up next to the gas tank and up inside the frame about an inch. So, when you're on the road and you're back, you know, like, couple car lights back you'll be able to read all the numbers on the plate but when you're at the show or out where somebody's looking at stuff the plate's kind of going to kind of be half hidden back here and uh, I think that's going to be a cool a cool look make it not so intrusive so I'm just monkeying around with this and I got tail light hung on there just trying to get an eyeball but I kind of like the way things are going to shake out here so I just got to finish hammering out my dents and then uh, scuff this down and I can get the rest of the paint on the box but I think that's about enough for this video and uh, next time I'm going to be doing some more tinkering. I'm not sure what yet, but we'll figure it out when we get there. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm putting out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Hit the bell for alerts. Tell your friends. And we'll see you right back here at the Quick Speed Shop for more working on the Model A Hot Rod Shop truck.